one of my favorite books, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. We're going to show you the seven step framework inside and how you can apply it to your online fitness business coming up. Do you want to create, market, or scale your online fitness business? My name's Sean Garner, and here we give real fit pros the tips, tools, and strategies they need to succeed online. Welcome to the EntreFit Podcast. What is up, guys? And welcome to the EntreFit Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for checking this out. I hope it adds a lot of value to you. If you're a real fitness pro looking to crush it online, this is the place for you to get the tips, tools, and strategies you need to succeed. Guys, this episode is kind of cool to me. Um, it's a sneak peek inside of our EntreFit coaching program. Uh, this is one of the lessons that we had a couple weeks back with our Fit Pros, where I shared with them the seven step frameworks from one of my favorite books, uh, Building a Story Brand by Don Miller. I love Don Miller um, and all the guys over at uh, Story Brand, incredible at helping just to break down the process of telling your message and connecting with your dream clients. So, this um, episode's gonna be a little bit longer. It's gonna be about 30 minutes long, but we are going to go through this seven step framework. You guys are gonna see a little bit behind the scenes of what one of our coaching sessions looks like inside the EntreFit coaching program. So, grab your notepad and get ready to take lots of notes because I know this one is going to add value to you. And if you're listening to this and you're like, man, this stuff is so good. I wish I could get more. Man, we would love to have you join our coaching program. And for all the podcast listeners, I am creating a special offer to where you actually can get one full week of the coaching program, access to all the course materials, kind of everything, um, access to our coaching calls and everything for just $1 for one week. Come check it out if it's not for you. Uh, hey, we 100% understand, but we know if you're really looking to succeed online, this is going to give you everything that you need to crush it. So if you're interested in joining our coaching program and getting your first week for just $1, visit us at entrefitcoaching.com, click the get started, drop your name and email and phone number there. I will personally reach out to you, get you set up with everything that you need to get started growing your fitness business for just $1. So grab your notes, guys, get ready to dive in and learn the seven-step framework for sharing your message and connecting with your customers on the Entrefit Podcast. Okay, so today, friends, is about the story brand framework. Like I said, I love this because this is a very simple framework for helping you to understand how to think about your copy um, and honestly, just all of your brand messaging. Because like I said, uh, I have, I think one of my superpowers is I'm really good at finding out frameworks and then learning how to apply them to not just my business, but every business. And so what I want to share with you guys today is something that's called the SB7 or the Story Brand 7 Framework. And this is from Donald Miller's Building a Story Brand. Very much highly recommend you guys read that book. He's got three books that are incredible. The first one is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. The second one is Marketing Made Simple. And then the third one he just came out with is called Business Made Simple. Um, the most important one, I think, out of all of those is the building a story brand. When you guys understand this, this is what uh, separates the mediocre from the ultra successful. It is not especially with what we do in fitness. It has absolutely nothing to do with how good the fitness product is, but how well you can communicate and relate to your customers. So customers generally, the big mistake that I see, especially in fitness is fitness professionals talking about themselves. And I think the reason why is because we look at these fitness influencers and we see the, you know, the quote unquote fame or success that they get. And we think that we need to copy those things, which it's kind of true. We need to look at some of the strategies that they've used for building a community, but the individual tactics don't necessarily make sense and apply to us. And what I mean by that is a, a a fitness influencer person that's got a lot of followers, they can create programs and sell programs that are all about them because they have already built this tribe of people that are in essence following them because they like the way they look or they like their personality. It's not because necessarily they have gotten all of this value from it. Like there's obviously exceptions to it that I would consider real fitness professionals like a, like a Brett Contreras, a John Berardi, some, you know, 
PhD exercise science guys, like people that are legit fit pros. But if you think about the like regular fitness influencer and the fitness model, they're just really, really in good shape. They posted some good pictures and some engaging video content. It got a lot of people to follow them. So they're able to just sell their fitness program and make it all about them. That is not very sustainable because especially if you want to have any type of longevity in this as a career, which you guys do. Uh, some of you guys have been doing this already for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. You know this, but it's helping you learn how to articulate this and share it online. Whenever we're talking about our messaging and our brand script, the customers do not want another hero. They want a guide. Your customer should be the hero of the story that you're inviting them to, which is your brand. And you are there as the guide to facilitate them. So in this uh, book, Building a Story Brand, they use a lot of movie examples. And they always say that, you know, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi kind of a dork, so I love the Star Wars movies. It, one of the examples that they give is you want to be like Yoda or Obi-Wan Kenobi. You don't want to be like the Luke Skywalker, right? Your, your customer or potential customer wants to be the hero of their own story, but they're looking for a guide. If they hear you talking about yourself and you becoming the hero, they'll say, okay, that sounds like it's a cool story, but I don't want to listen to it because I'm trying to find a solution or a guide to my problems right now. So in order for us to be very successful with these frameworks, we have to understand that step, the first thing that we have to do is we have to make it all about our customers and the words that we use to attract our customers are the most important things you could have. I will tell you guys this, pretty images and pretty websites don't sell things. Your words sell things and the copy you use sells things. So in order for that copy to work, it has to follow a formula. It has to follow a script and that's what will make it work and stand, stand out to be successful. <sighs> Whenever we're coming up with these frameworks, you have to make sure that it is clear as possible because the human brain is always driven towards clarity and away from confusion. So that's one thing, like whenever I'm looking at like social media profiles or website copy, I'll ask you guys or, or ask clients or potential clients all the time questions about how can you make this more simple? How can we make this more clear? Because the people that are very successful have a very simple, clear, and direct call to action. There shouldn't be any like cute and clever words to just try and sound really intelligent. It needs to be extremely simple on what you do and how you're going to make your clients better. So here is the framework Then I want to break down each and every one of these sections. Um, so I can give you guys some real life examples and show you how to apply these things. I will tell you this, this is not, this is a framework for putting all of your branding and messaging through. This is not a framework of like a speech, a video, a website, an email. This is how to think about your brand because I've talked about this before. Your brand is so much more than logos, color preferences, and fonts that you like. Your brand is your essence and it is who you are and it is how you show up and serve your people every day. So here's the framework. A character who wants something encounters a problem before they can get it, at the peak of their despair, a guide steps into their life, gives them a plan, calls them to action, helps them avoid failure, and ends in success. Those seven steps. Character has a problem, meets a guide, gives them a plan, calls them to action, helps them avoid failure, and then shows them to success. This is one of the frameworks I use for all brand messaging, for all sales letters, for videos. And you'll even see that this is also a variation of whenever I give you guys scripts for direct messaging, for sales scripts, it all falls within those things. So knowing that that's your framework, whenever you're looking at your social media, and we've talked about this on, on uh, uh, marketing stuff before, when you look at your social media profiles and when you look at your website, we want everything to be clear and fit with inside that framework. You, your website, your social media profiles, your bios, they have to be able to pass what they call the grunt test. And so within five seconds of somebody landing on your social media profiles or looking at your website, they need to be able to answer these three questions. If not, you're going to have a very high bounce rate. Um, a bounce rate is just whenever somebody clicks on the page and then immediately bounces off because they didn't even uh, go through one scroll on the website or on the phone. So first thing is what 
off, what do you offer? Number two is how do you make their life better? And number three is what do I need to do to buy it? If somebody comes to your website, your social media profiles, they want to know what do you offer, how are you going to make their life better, and what do I need to do to buy it? They don't care about how long you've been a trainer. They don't care about what certifications that you have. They don't care about um, when you started this company. Um, they don't care that um, you know, you've got on all these awards. That will matter, but that's not what they're immediately looking for. They're trying to find out exactly what do you offer and what, what problem that they have can you solve because people are always trying to navigate life and looking for things to help them survive and thrive. Like whenever you get to like the, uh, the, the primitive, primitive, uh, primitive instincts, people are always scanning their environment, advertising information for things that's gonna help them survive and thrive. So that means we have to, in order for us to be successful, we have to position our coaching and our programs as things that help people survive, help them thrive, help them be accepted, find love, achieve an aspirational identity, or bond with a tribe that will help them defend themselves physically and socially. That's it. Like that sounds stupid, but that's what people are actually looking for. Um, you, you've probably heard this said about Rolexes before. People don't buy a Rolex because it's the world's best watch. They buy it because of the identity that's that's associated with that's associated with success. Um, same thing with uh, like high end handbags and stuff like that. People don't buy it because it's like, huh. This handbag is going to, this purse is going to hold my stuff so much better than the other one. No, they're buying it because the identity that's associated with that, it's associated with success. It's associated with status and people are always looking for those things in everything that they buy. Um, thing with having more status makes you more socially acceptable. If we get to our, like our primitive instincts means we're going to have more of our local tribesmen to support us when the other tribe comes to attack us. Like that's what people are looking with. And it sounds really weird until you start breaking it down. You're like, yeah, it actually does make sense. Um, so here we go. Going over the framework, guys, it is seven steps that you have to start putting all of your marketing materials, you have to look at it through this lens if you want it to be successful. So number one is the character. It always starts with your customer. It is not about you. The main hero towards your story, your coaching, your product should be your hero. This is why we talk so much about knowing who your target client is, who your dream client is, who you're called to serve and who you want to help. When you're very clear about who you want to help and who you're called to serve, it makes you stand out more. It gives them somebody to look at to know that like, okay, they have the solutions because they are speaking to a very specific demographic. For me, my character going back to Project Dad Bods was dads, busy working dads. That was my character that I am now. It's the fitness professional, the, the real fitness professional, people that do fitness for a career. Second thing is, that has a problem. So everybody has a problem. And that's why whenever you know who you're called to help, it's very easy to identify and talk about the problems that you solve for them. This is where we get down to you're not just selling fitness and nutrition programs, guys, you're selling deeper things. So typically, where most people fail, or they're not as successful as they could be, is they try to sell problems to Ex solutions to external problems only. They try to sell, hey, buy my fitness program, buy my nutrition program. But that, like we talked about, is not what people want. They're looking, that is the external problem of maybe they're overweight, but that's not the big ones. The ones where you, the deeper you go with this, the more successful you need, you'll, you will be. What you really want to focus on is the internal and the philosophical problems because the deeper you go, the more you'll connect with them. So going back to my character was dads, right? The problem that I solved on the outside is, man, I help busy dads get fit fast. That was the external problem that I solved. I was a coach. Um, I'm going to give you an awesome fitness, nutrition, and accountability program to help you lose 10 pounds um, within this 12-week program. That was the external program. The internal problem that I solved was, and this is what I talked about in my brand messaging, is I help give dads the confidence and energy they need to better serve their family. Okay, that was the internal problem I'm solving for people, helping them get their confidence back. Um, the philosophical problem that I was solving is that every dad deserves to be the best for their family. 
Like it's not right that they that they don't feel this way and that they don't feel as that they're best serving their family. That was the philosophical thing. For for Entrefit, the philosophical problem that I'm solving, and you guys are probably all here because you can relate to it. It is not right that these fitness influencers that have no experience are doing better than you guys online. That's the philosophical thing that like to my core that I am solving and the problem that I'm solving. We do that through a business coaching program uh, to help you make more time and financial freedom so that what you can live the life that you're called to live, but the ultimate deep root is it's not right that there's people with less experience than you making more money. So that's the stuff that I focus on. So, Kind of stepping back just a little bit, how you guys will use this as you come up with this framework is you will use this for everything. So any social media post, any email, any video, any website edits that you make have to pass through this filter of your framework because if it is inconsistent, it seems inauthentic. So everything that you say has to pass through this framework of your brand that you create. So first thing is you have a character. The second thing is you have the problem that you solve for that character. And then the third thing is meets a guide. You are the guide that they're looking for. But even though you're the guide, you are not the thing to that I that people struggle with. You're not there to give to solve the problem for them. You're there to provide the solution. And if you even think about great coaches and coaching, you can't go there and lift the weight for them. You can't go be the hero for them. You can be a guide to show them the path. So really good guides typically have been there before themselves or they already have a track record of other people that they've done this before. So whenever you are ever talking about yourself in this brand identity, it's not about how awesome you are, but it's relating to them um, with empathy and authority. So it's being empathetic and it's showing them that you know what it's like to be in that place because you've either been there um, yourself or you've worked with several people, you've had people close to you that have gone through that situation. And then also authority. Man, I've actually gotten incredible results for people just like this and here they are. That's why we've talked about before, testimonials and success stories are so huge because Everybody can, especially on the internet, everybody's a millionaire. Everybody can, you know, help you lose, you know, a hundred pounds in two days and all this crazy stuff. But very few people can actually back it up with real world specific testimonials. And this is where that comes to place whenever they meet their guide, because they're looking this, this person, right? This, this boss, babe, this stay at home mom, like they're looking for solutions to these problems. And then they find you, they're asking themselves, is this the person that can finally help solve my problem? So you do that by number four, giving them a plan. This is where we have talked about before coming up with your own signature program to how you get results and having some type of three-step program for how you are going to um, help them. And, and it could be something, you need to have some type of system and it's not just, oh, hire me or join my coaching program. No, it's like, okay, whenever you join the Boss Bay Bikini program, this is exactly how we help you you know, get that confidence back in your bikini so you can finally love your, you can learn to love yourself again or, or whatever the uh, philosophical problems are that you have, Nikki. This is how we do it. Step one is we do a detailed assessment. We find out exactly what your goals are, what you're looking for, so we can make sure that we can step two, build a custom program just for you. This is not a cookie cutter, one size fits all approach, but we make sure that we take into account your equipment that you have, the goals that you have, and your specific timeline so we can make this program for you. And then step three is you go and get results and you execute on the program. You join our weekly coaching calls and that's how we get success with our three-step program. For me, the three-step program, uh, that is, mine is pretty similar to that for, for Project DadBot is uh, step one is get on a call. We do a detailed assessment with you and find out how to uh, write the program for you. Two is we create a custom fitness and nutrition program just for you, meets your goals. And then step three is we execute on the program. We've got weekly accountability check-in calls. We've got group coaching calls um, and, and group workouts for you to be a part of to make sure that you're always staying on track. And uh, we're assessing your goals and re readjusting the program as needed. With Entrefit, three-step program as we show you how to build a community. We teach you how to build the offers that are a uh, no-brainer and attract your customer. And then three, we show you how to build the systems that sustain the thing. It's a three-step process. There's a reason why I do everything that I do. I follow this framework. Um, so number one, I've, you got your character that's got a problem. You're the guide that has now given them 
a plan, well, guess what? They're not going to do anything with that plan unless you, number five, call them to action. Your calls to action have to be very specific and clear. Um, there's reasons why on successful e-commerce websites, you don't see a button that says, you know, click here if maybe you're thinking about possibly considering to buy this product. Like it's very direct. It's buy now, shop now, get started now. You should be very specific and clear with what action your customers or potential customers, I should say, need to take in order for them to engage with you. They have somehow stumbled across you in this internet machine. They have a problem. They look at you as a possible guide. You've presented a problem that makes sense. Unless you tell them what to do next, do not assume they are going to try and figure it out on their own. They're going to buy from the person that presents the easiest way to get started. If it's like, oh, click this link and then you're going to fill out this form. And then, you know, in three days we might jump on a call with you, see if it's a good fit. Um, and then you're going to have to, you know, send us your firstborn child and a small blood sample and like all the, like they're not going to do it. They want a very simple way to know that they're going to get started and they're going to start being able to implement this plan that this awesome guide has given them for this uh, problem that they have to uh, deal with. Um, until we call them to action, they're just going to watch you. This is why whenever you guys understand just those first five steps, that is why a blunt, the thing like the blunt post works so well. Because you're very specific about the character that you're looking for. You're talking about the problem that you solve for them. You're positioning yourself as an expert um, because typically there's an image of you that's fit, healthy, smiling, and the aspirational identity they're looking for. You give them a uh, plan of how you're going to join your 12-week program or coaching for whatever it is, and you have a very direct call to action. DM me X to get started now. There's a reason. That's, that right there, guys, is the secret of why the blunt post works is because it's following this framework. Now, whenever we dive into this a little bit deeper with these last two points, this is how you can maximize content like that to get more people to engage with you. <sighs> Number six, after you have given them a call to action, there's still going to be people that don't want to take action because people, um, I would say for the most part, are very optimistic and they like to, be, they like to think the best about their problems that eventually this is just going to get better on its own. Like they, they think I, you guys have probably seen this before with your clients where if they don't do anything, I mean, eventually this is just going to fix itself. This is, I'm, I'm just going to miraculously lose my 30 pounds that I've put on in the past decade. Um, they think that in their mind, um, most people, uh, fitness professionals, they think that all of a sudden business is miraculously going to get better. Like all of a sudden money is going to start coming into the bank account and they don't have to do any of this stuff. Like, no guys, you have to show people the cost of what's at stake for them not taking action. So this is where people don't like to be in their marketing super negative. And, and I'm not saying that you have to go down that road and lie people or do like fear-based marketing, but you do have to be real with people and let them know guys like this is not going to solve itself on its own. You're not going to miraculously lose that weight. You're not going to wake up one day and all of a sudden have more energy because you decided not to take action. If you truly want to have the better life, if you truly want to feel better, if you truly want to lose that weight, if you truly want to improve your health, you have to take action on it. If not, da, 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 and you tell them what's going to happen. With, with, with me, with, with Andrevit, guys, if you decide not to take action and try to grow your online business, eventually the influencers will take over and you will probably just be writing programs for people like them that are the face of these companies now and you're working behind the scenes in an office on a cubicle just writing programs all day because that's all you'll be needed for because the way the industry is going is these brands are needing people that are not only intelligent trainers, but also are great communicators and have these online brands. Um, so if you don't want to be left in the dark, you need that. Um, with Project DadBot, it was what's going to happen is 10 years from now, your kids are going to be graduating high school and you're going to realize that you've missed out on the majority of their life because you've been working yourself like crazy and you haven't had any energy when you came home from work. And now you're looking at yourself, your kids have left the house, you're 30 pounds overweight, and you're wondering what happened to my life. That's what, that's the thing I was helping these dads avoid is missing out on time with their family and getting their bodies back and enjoying time with their spouse again. Um, and you have to talk about those things where if not, a lot of the people will not take action, but 
we always want to end on a high note. So number seven and the last step of this, we have to show them. We, we Not only do we have to show them what happens if they don't take action, we have to show them and paint the brighter future of what happens when they do take action and what success looks like. Never assume that people understand how your brand, your coaching program is going to change their life. You have to tell them. Uh, some people, reason being is some people think too small. They think like, okay, I'm going to do this program. I might lose five or 10 pounds. Lotty freaking da. You got to show them how awesome that's going to be and how that's going to change their life, how they're going to have improved health markers. They're going to have more energy. Man, what would it feel like to have more energy to actually come home from work and not want to plop down in front of the TV, but want to go out and do things with your family? How, how much better is that going to make your family life to be able to come home work full of energy and wanting to play with your kids, want to take your wife out for a date because you're not exhausted. Like how much more confident are you going to have going to the pool, going to the lake this uh, uh, summer with your family and being able to take your shirt off and, and not be, you know, that dad that swims with his shirt on. Like that's what you have to talk about. You have to paint the brighter picture for them and show them how much better their lives will be after they take action because people are going to assume it's going to get better on their own. So we have to show them what happens when they don't take action, but also paint the brighter picture for what happens when they do take action. So guys, quick recap. This is like, like I said, the story brand framework. These seven steps should be what you use to create your brand identity and your brand messaging. And anything that you say for social content, for emails or website should get filtered through this. And if it doesn't keep telling and aligning with the same story, it doesn't serve your brand and you need to cut it. Because I will say nobody's brand in here is big enough at this time to have multiple story arcs in it. Imagine um, a movie where, uh, I don't know if you guys have, I've seen or like the Jason Bourne movies. I love the Jason Bourne movies. Imagine if Jason Bourne had to figure out his identity as this, you know, uh, deep cover agent, and then had to get a girl to go to prom with him, then had to reestablish a relationship with his dad, and then had to win the singing competition. Like, that doesn't make any sense. There's too much going on here. That would never be successful. But by having just one story arc and one framework that they stick with, that's what makes movies super successful. So know your character. Know what problem they have. Position yourself as a guide with empathy and authority. Give them a plan. Call them to action. Show them what happens if they do not engage with you. And then number seven, show them how awesome life will be when they do join your coaching program. So I hope this helps give you guys better frameworks for talking to your people. So, oh, all right, all right, awesome, guys. Hopefully that added value to you guys, give you that seven-step framework that you should be using with all of your brand messaging. And if you want that plus like a thousand times more content and direct coaching with me to show you how to create market and grow your online fitness business. Check us out, entrefitcoaching.com. Look at the success stories and the awesome fit pros that we've worked with in the past and learn how, guys, if you're a podcast listener, fill out to get started, drop your name, email, phone number. I will personally send you a message and you can get your first week in the coaching program for just $1 to check it out, see if it's the right program for you to help you be successful online. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't and share with a Fit Pro friend. Have an awesome day and we'll see you on the next episode.